Hey, Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, and I wanted to share with you this bonus article and video, so it becomes part eight in my extreme bookmarking series. Now, why? Where is this coming from? It's actually simple, and it's the kind of thing that comes up for me because of who I am, what I do, how I do it, essentially, which is I like to play with a lot of different apps. Now, this one came about quite by accident about a week ago, as of the moment I'm recording this. I was uh, testing out a, uh, a friend's website in my browser, and I was putting the link into her website, and I was getting a dead page. It was as if the site was down. And I reached out to her, and she said, no, it comes up fine on my end. So I tried several different Chrome sessions, and I even dusted off Microsoft Edge and tried that, and I was getting the same result. Now, I know these things can happen regionally. I've had it happen where I, you know, I end up with a GoDaddy customer support, for example, and because my own site seems to be down, but they can confirm it's up in other areas of the country, just not here. And, you know, and then you, oftentimes it can be a browser caching, you know, browser history issue. Um, of course, I tried clearing my browser history to get my friend's site to work, and that didn't uh, yield any results. So as a sort of last gasp, I said, well, clearly something's wrong on my end, because I even had a few other people test the site out, and they said it was fine for them. And after clearing my history, I'm like, well, that's not fixing the problem. What could be wrong? So I went and installed a browser that I, you know, I've known about. It's been around for many years, but I hadn't looked at it in quite a few years until recently, which is the Opera browser. And I went and installed it just to test it out, just to see if the site would work there. Because this one, you know, Chrome, even though you're in different sessions, it's still Chrome. There might be some files that are being shared between sessions. You know, who knows? So I knew Opera would be a completely independent test. And funny enough, I tried I tried her site in Opera. It worked perfectly. And what's really funny, not funny, haha, but funny, uh, after that, when I went back to Chrome, her site worked fine. So I have no idea what was going on. Um, but that confirmed it, that it was me and not her. But then something caught my attention. As I'm looking at the Opera browser, I'm like, you know, I kind of like the look and feel of this. Like, it's been a while. While I'm here, why not check it out? Have a look under the hood, see what's going on. And, of course, the first thing I want to know is how does it handle bookmarks, right? Because when I looked at it in years past, I always liked it. I sort of liked the idea that not a lot of people used it. I liked the idea that it boasted privacy and, and speed because it's, it blocks ads and, and cookies and other things. Um, <clears throat> so I thought, why not? So I start playing with the bookmarks, and all of a sudden I'm getting like into it. I'm like, I actually really like the layout here. It, it, it has a feature that I mentioned in the write-up that Mozilla Firefox had when it first came out where you can keep a little side panel of your bookmarks open, resonant, always visible no matter what tab you're in. Right? With Chrome, you can open up a tab with your bookmarks, but of course once you click on one, you're in another tab, and you, you, to get back to your bookmarks, you have to click back over to that tab. So not a huge deal, but it creates a bit of friction. Right? So so I love that right away. I'm like, this is great. This is something I've missed for years. Um, and then I just started playing around more and more and discovering more of the features, watched a few videos on it. And it was like, the more I looked, the more I liked. And now here we are a week after that, as of this, you know, as of the moment I'm recording this, and I'm all in with Opera. I've been moving all my bookmarks over. I've been, I've barely touched Chrome in the past week, other than to just jump in there and like grab a bookmark that I want to move over to Opera. And even if there was, I haven't looked, there might be a way to import bookmarks, but I never do that kind of stuff because to me, this is an opportunity to bring over the things I really want. And anything that doesn't come up is clearly something I don't necessarily need anymore. And if I do, it's, I can always jump back into Chrome. I'm not going to uninstall Chrome. Um, I'm just not using it. But let me take, let me take you to my screen so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So the first thing, of course, I'm going to show you is the bookmarks. We're going to talk about the bookmarks. We're going to talk about pinboards, the messenger apps, which you can already see on my screen, and um, and workspaces. And then I want to add a, a little note about extensions, because you're going to be wondering about that if you're not already. So I'm in what's called the speed dial page. On my left, you'll see it on the little sidebar. Uh, the little four box icon will open up this page, right? And as you can see, I've created some bookmarks here because when I open up a new browser page, it's very possible I want to go to my own website. I also happen to love to read Forbes. Penzo is my journaling app. It's where I write my personal journal entries every day or just about every day. And as you can see, it's very easy to click and add a site. Of course, the way to do it is to have the tab open that you want to add to this and so you can copy and paste the URL, right? Common sense. So. That's the speed dial page. Let's go to the bookmarks. So there's lots of stuff on the left. I'm going to go through a lot of it, not all of it. Um, but let's go here 
to the heart. The heart is your the things you love, right? Your bookmarks, your favorites. So I'm going to click that, and right away you can see it pops open a little panel. So if I wanted to go to uh, this Adobe Acrobat Convert tool that I use a lot, you know, I bookmark that. And as you can see, it opens right up. And then notice the side panel went away, right? But watch this. If I click the heart again, and I click the little thumbtack, now it'll stay. Right, so now no matter where I go, no matter what tab I go into, it's all here, right? And I don't lose sight of my bookmarks. I literally don't lose sight of them, right? And as you can see, I've started to organize them in folders. And then the stuff that's on the bar is the stuff here, like ClickUp is something I immediately want to get access to. So I'm not going to put it in a folder. Same with my calendar drive and so on, right? So right away, this is what I was talking about. This is what I love about the layout of the bookmarks. Now, if I want to like get focused on the bookmarks and organize them a little bit more, I, it's easy to organize from within here. I can just click and drag anything. But over here, I can click Open Full Bookmarks View, and I can you know I can get some more visual type views on these. Uh, there's another way, smaller tiles, and then here is just the list. Interesting thing I discovered is, you know, sometimes when I initially bookmark a site, the URL I'm actually bookmarking is based on some page within the site that I'm on, which isn't really what I want to bookmark. I just want to quickly get it in there, and then I want to edit the URL. I'm just basically I'm going to go edit the URL and back it up to the root URL for that website, whatever it might be, right? Um, so I was disappointed at first because on the left. If I go to edit the bookmark, I can only change the name. But when I'm in this page, I was happy to discover that I can edit from here and I can get into the URL, as you can see. So if I wanted to change the ClickUp bookmark to just its root, you know, app.clickup.com, I can just hit the backspace, back everything up to that point, and then save it, right? Which I don't actually want to do because this is a specific view that I've bookmarked in ClickUp. Right. So very, very easy and very well organized. And as as often is the case with me, I love it when I can kind of tuck something away like that for the times when I don't really need it. But it's very easy and quick to access it when I do. Right. So this works a lot better also on my big curved widescreen because I have a lot more real estate there. So I often have this open and keep it open while I'm working on that screen, right? So that's your bookmarks. The rest of it, I'm sure you can figure out. You're all very smart people, right? Uh, creating a new bookmark, of course, if I'm here, I would just click the heart icon up here. And then from here, I can browse. I can edit the name while I'm here. And then I can save it, right? So very, very easy to create bookmarks on the fly, as is the case with every other browser out there. Nothing you know, necessarily really special there. Okay, so that's bookmarks. Next, I want to show you pin boards. Now, pin boards are really cool. They're more visual, right? So when I go to pin boards, that's this icon on the left. Basically, and I'll get rid of that for now just to give us some more room. Um, you create, you know, little clusters of bookmarks. And I'll show you what the cool thing is about this. So I'll go into my reading uh, pin board. And I've just started, so it's not there's not a lot in here yet. Um, but you can see there's, you can click on appearance and change the layout you know, whatever you like. Um, but the idea of this is, as you can see, it's collections, it's visual. I can actually edit any of these and change the image or add one if I don't have one right over here. Um, you know, so very customizable. But the cool thing about this also is I can share it. So if, let's say I have a, let's say I have working with a client and I want to be able to share bookmarks. As many of you know, I, I use Google Docs a lot. And so there may be some key Google Docs that I want to share with the client. Well, all I have to do is create the pin board with those uh, links to those documents in that pin board. And then I can click share and send my client this link. And then my client can access these pin boards. Now, I haven't tested it to see what it looks like from the other side. Um, I, I get this. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be view only for the client, but it doesn't need to be more than that. I, you know, this way I'm kind of deciding what goes in there and what we need. Obviously, if the client wants me to add something, they can request it. But it's a nice, easy way to share something like this with a client or anybody that I'm collaborating with for any reason. So we can just kind of share bookmarks, right? I think there is a way to um, make it so that other people can come in here and add their own bookmarks. It may even work that way right off the bat with that share link. Like I said, I just haven't tested it that far yet. This is all still very new to me, but I love the idea of the pin boards, you know, just based on the visual nature of it, as well as the collaborative nature, right? And down here you'll have Opera will, you know, this was in here by default, 
uh, from Opera so you can kind of learn more about pin boards and how they work. So that's pin boards. Next, Messenger apps. You can already recognize them, I'm sure, on the left. Here's Facebook Messenger. If I want to jump in here and I want to respond to something, I can jump in here. I can respond to my wife here real quick. I can pin it to keep it open if I want to be able to, you know, like every time my wife responds while I'm working, you know, then I can just write her another response. Uh, so I can pin it. I can resize it. Again, this works a lot better when I'm in my larger widescreen. And of course, when I'm done, I can unpin it and get it out of the way. Same thing with WhatsApp, which is where and how I keep in touch with a lot of my family members, right? So, you know, my father especially loves to post stuff in here, family memorabilia, that sort of thing. And of course, we've got Instagram and Twitter, you know, so this is just a quick window into my Twitter account. So I can go in here and, you know, if I want to, I can comment on Chris Brogan's uh, you know, post here on Twitter. And I love Twitter. I still love Twitter. I love the fact that they included Twitter here um, because it's not as popular, I don't think, as it used to be. Although nowadays with what's going on with Facebook and everything, maybe it'll get more popular again. Uh, Workspaces was like the final thing that pushed me over the edge and made me feel like, okay, I need to go all in with the Opera browser. Now, many of you I know, because I've seen you, uh, like to have 100 tabs open. And there's so many tabs open that they're so small that you can't even tell what they are anymore. So I'm not sure how that's useful, but what do I know? Um, the, you know the, the, the solution I think that Opera has come up with for that is the workspaces. So this is customizable. I can right click and I can manage workspaces. So you can see I have one that I'm just calling work. Uh, P-Link is a client of mine and I'm doing a lot of Airtable stuff for them. So I like having their own workspace so I can keep the different Airtable windows open that I need for working in things. 97 and up, most of you know, is my mentor program. Uh, communications is actually uh, where I will keep track of things like my email, right? So if I want to, and I love this because I can jump in here into communications and I have my SethWorks network, there's my email, I have Twitter open in there. But this way, if I want to take a break and do something other than, you know, actual work or whatever, you know, communications wise, I can jump in here real quick. I can see if there's anything I need to respond to. And then I can click right back to the work tab over here, the work workspace and get back to getting focused on, you know, the work at hand, right? So I love this. Uh, again, if you right click, you can manage workspaces, very customizable. If I'm editing a workspace, you know, you have some icons you can choose from to create the visuals. That's how I did it, you know, that you can see on the left. And, uh, and I love this. I love this way of kind of dividing up where my tabs lived. And by the way, if I close Opera, if I close the whole browser down, it's great because it remembers the tabs that I had to open. And if I go to my mobile device, and I open up the Opera browser on my mobile, I can access all the tabs. It will have them remembered and it's synced right over. So I can access, I can get up from my computer, close uh, close Opera, walk away, open up on my mobile and literally pick up right where I left off, whatever I was doing, you know, and just do it on my mobile if I want to. So so I, I, I love, love, love this browser. It is quickly, as you can probably tell, grab my attention. As of the moment I'm recording this video, it has been not quite a week since I took out the Opera browser just to run a test. And next thing I know, a week later, I'm all in. I'm moving everything over. I've barely opened Chrome all week long, other than, I think I said this before, to grab something like a URL out of it that I want to open up here in Opera and, um, and save that bookmark in Opera. I also promised you extensions. So let me show you that real quick. Uh, Opera's extensions are, where'd they go? They're down here. Okay, and you can customize the sidebar to control what shows. Here's extensions. So Opera has a lot of its own extensions, but there's one really important one that I wanna show you that you're going to want to turn on, which is this one, which is called install Chrome extensions. So I was worried because I rely heavily on a few Chrome extensions in particular, such as ClickUp, so I can easily add emails into Chrome as a task, right? I use that all day long, every day. And also my, my um, extension for the brain. So of course, the first thing I did was check to see if Opera had those extensions. It doesn't, but then I discovered this. And the way this works is, as it suggests, you can install any Chrome extension. The way to do it is if you know you're looking for that particular extension while you're in Opera, just do a search. Search for ClickUp. Chrome extension, 
it will take you to some search results. You'll find the site pretty easily. And since I'm viewing it in Opera, if I click install Chrome extension from their website, Opera is going to pick it up. It says remove because I've already installed it. If, if I hadn't already installed it, it would say add to Opera. So it's, it, And I love when they're, they're smart like that. Like they've taken the time to reassure me that I'm not going to mess something up. It actually will say add to Opera. So it's very clear to me that I'm not like going to break the browser somehow by installing an incompatible extension. Right? It sort of just makes it clear that what I'm doing is going to be fine. Now you will get a prompt from Opera basically saying, hey, this is not one of our extensions, so we can't guarantee anything. Um, but like I said, so far I haven't had any problems. And I'm often running very seamlessly doing all the things I've been accustomed to doing in Chrome. I do find that this is uh, a little faster. And I just, like I said, I love the features. I love the organization of it. I love how easy this browser makes it for me to keep my information organized, to keep the stuff I'm working on organized so that I can tuck things away, neatly get them out of the way when I'm not using them, and easily bring them out when it's time to get focused and work on something. That, my friends, is my two cents or ten cents worth on the Opera browser, why I'm using it, why I dove in and, and went all in with it. I don't do that often. I look at a lot of apps throughout every single week, and it's very rare that something like this happens. But here, this thing just grabbed a hold of me, and the more I played with it, the more it was, it was like all the things I've been missing from working in Chrome for years. And before that, I forget what I was using before Chrome, probably Internet Explorer, or maybe it was Firefox even. Um, it probably was Firefox. But anyway... I would love to get your feedback <coughs> if you've tried Opera as a result of watching this video and whether you decided to switch over to it or actually even especially if you did not decide, I would love to hear your feedback. The best way I can learn is to learn by, by, by focusing on information that goes against what I think. So if you disagree with me, I would love to know why because I might learn something from you by actually listening to what your reasons are for why maybe you didn't love the Opera browser and went back to Chrome or Edge or whatever it is you've been using. On the other hand, of course, I'd also love to hear from those of you who try this out and end up adopting it uh, because, again, I'd love to know the reasons why, the specific reasons, whether it was the same as mine or maybe it was something else. I'm always looking to learn from you just as much as I want to be able to teach you what I've learned and experienced. So, uh, so it's a two-way street, and along those lines, Post your comments below where you're watching this or you know how to find me on my website. Uh, so find me and I will uh, be happy to engage in a conversation with you and learn from you what you like, what you don't like, and why you may or may not have chosen after watching this to adopt the Opera browser into your tech stack. As always, I hope you had some fun here, learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.